The following CannabisRadio.com program contains explicit language and content that can be considered graphic and offensive. This program is not suitable for all audiences, and the opinions expressed do not reflect those of CannabisRadio.com, its staff, management, or sponsors. Listener discretion is advised. And now, Sprint Honors, Stoner Jesus, and St. Peter's Call on their new network. Hey, Peter, what's up? Oh, not much, Jesus. I was just banging this uh, this midget tranny. How about you? Oh, that's Cray Adores. Obvi. So anyway, are you going to be at the show tonight? Toots my goats. Toots my goats? Oh, I'm sorry. That's the name of the tranny. Oh, what'd you ask me? I was asking about the show tonight. Are you going to be at the show tonight? Well, maybe me and Toots are going to see a Medea Christmas. Man, uh, she loves tranny movies. Hmm. That's Cray Ironic. Yeah, well, maybe, uh, maybe there, I uh, may not be, uh, you know, whatevs. Yeah, yeah, it's, it's whatevs. Tranny Humper says what? What? Okay, I'll see you later. Amazeballs. In honor of the important things you do, Sprint wants to remind you to be nice to trannies and be nice to midgets and be doubly nice to midget trannies. You would fall off of a cliff and fall on your... This show is a well-oiled machine. Pizzas shaped like penises. That's gold, son. CannabisRadio.com presents... The Stoner Jesus Show. F***ing Christ. Stone or Jesus Show podcast. July 20th, 2016. Welcome to everyone listening live and on podcast. We're doing it live on CannabisRadio.com and Cannabis Radio on Spreaker. Podcast, of course, on SternJesus.net. Stitcher, iTunes, iHeartRadio, and podcast now on YouTube. Go check out our YouTube channel. It's cool. It's like a slideshow and it's like annotated and, you know, the times are marked out for different segments and it's fucking awesome, man. I actually put some work into it. Maybe the regular show will suffer for it, but we'll see. <laughs> Maybe that's time I should be putting into the actual show. I don't know. I went into like our video problems and all that shit last episode. I'm not going to re- rehash it, as it were. Just know we're going to be doing more Periscope stuff, more Facebook Live stuff during the show. Facebook.com slash SternJesus420 or SternJesus420 on Periscope as well. I'm on Twitter. That is SternJesus420 also. It's a theme. Stoners have bad memories. Although I am Stoner, or I am the SternJesus420 on YouTube. That's kind of annoying, but I explained that last episode too. I had SternJesus420 on YouTube and like I did too much copyrighted shit or whatever and they started restricting me and I was like fuck that man the man can't keep me down I'm not gonna fucking take your restrictions dude and you know so I made these stoner Jesus 420 <laughs> but it sounded better in my head it sounded you know, more like a revolution against the man but really it's just me you know changing YouTube channels and really bad is Instagram that's stoner Jesus pics I was really late to Instagram Stoner Jesus P-I-X on Instagram. You want to check me out? <laughs> I know you're thinking that's a dumb name. Hey, fuck you, man. I don't come to your job and criticize you until you burn my fries. You know what I'm saying? If you want to email the show, that's also stonerjesus420 at gmail.com. Tell me what a dickhead I am. But please, I'm going to keep all, try to keep the hate mail in one place, so let's do the, the email if you would. It's the best place for the hate mail. If you're going to send me some hate mail, and I'm... I'm not saying necessarily that you are. If you wanted to, that'd be the way to do it. We're also on Patreon. I'm 
I know I've been saying this for a long time, but I'm inching ever closer to the giveaway on that. You know, our, our sponsor for the giveaway, our potential sponsor, there's a lot of shit going on. Uh, they, they, you know, they're, they're, they're doing a lot of shit, which is another way of saying there's a lot of shit going on. But it, we'll get there. We'll get there. It'll be worth it. Trust me. It's slow going, but it'll be worth it. If you're a supporter on Patreon, try and get some, some advertising uh, revenue dollars going. Like stuff that'll go toward advertising. Like other places, getting the word out in other places. We got a few other avenues uh, going for that. I got a couple big interviews I'm trying to get. I'm not going to talk about either one. I'm not going to jinx either one. Just suffice to say, there's two major interviews. These two interviews, if I got them, would be the two biggest interviews we've ever done on the show. And we've interviewed some pretty cool people. Michael Rosenbaum from Impastor. Uh, he was Lex Luthor in Smallville. Um, Shelby Chong, wife of Tommy Chong. Uh, Haley Marie Norman, who was uh, uh, one of the cases, like case 25 or 26 on Deal or No Deal. Really just fucking amazingly gorgeous woman. Uh, other, uh, you know, famous people, the Reverend Bob Levy he used to be on the Howard Stern Show all the time. He used to host the roast on the Howard Stern Show when they went to Sirius. He's been on my show. I've had Mr. Skin on my show. Just the list goes on and on. But these would be the two biggest interviews. Two well, one is like one person, and one could be more than one person. Th- these two entities are legendary in the Stoner community. I may not get either one. You may never hear anything else about it. I'll hide my disappointment <laughs> and cry about it. But now we just move on. There's been a lot of interviews I haven't got. We're going to talk about an interview I didn't get uh, later here on the show with the free Milo hashtag Milo Yiannopoulos. I tried getting him on the show. See, some um, some people like Mia Khalifa, you know, I can catch and get them on the show before their star kind of breaks the stratosphere. I think I was a little bit late on Milo. He's just blown the fuck all over the place. <laughs> Literally and figuratively. Anyway, he was permanently banned from Twitter. We'll get into that after the break. Also, the Church of Stoner Jesus tonight, we have a sermon. Your calls, your confessions, one three four seven four one four weed we have a voicemail coming up from St. Peter. We'll talk about that in a minute. Uh, I did mention YouTube. Why don't you go check out our YouTube channel? It's linked on sternjesus.net. The Stoner Jesus 420 on YouTube. Posting full episodes of the show. I said I'm actually putting some work in that shit. But I think that it's it's really the, the other platform that we need a presence on. We need to build Facebook. We need to build YouTube. The rest of the shit, eh. Twitter, sad to say, since I have 145,000 fucking followers on there, is dying. Is just dying. And again, what we'll talk about later is part of the reason. Also tonight, some uh, let's check out some viral shit from around the internet. And all of that. The first, St. Peter. For those of you who don't know, quick uh, recap. St. Peter in the epic Spexit vote from a few weeks ago on Twitter was unceremoniously booted from the show, kicked off the property. Uh, he was with some chick named Berta for a while, but she was, uh, if I remember correctly, I'll try to do this recap from memory because I didn't fucking write it down. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? I'm not to waste my time on that shit. He moved in with Berta. She was drinking all his Drano and snorting all his drugs, so he stole her phone and left. He made himself a little makeshift shanty outside the gate of the Stoner Jesus Studio Complex. Uh, it was sort of like a pile of garbage next to the gate for those driving by. He was out there in some kind of sort of protest for a while. Kept leaving voicemails the whole time. You can listen to the episodes from the last few weeks. You'll hear all the voicemails. I may put them together in one classic compilation someday. <laughs> the best of St. Peter voicemails. There's going to be 50, 60, 70 of those motherfuckers. Just tons. Tons. I can start playing voicemails from St. Peter over the course of this show, over the history of this show, and just sit here for days and play fucking voicemails. Maybe not days. But hours. Certainly. We've got another voicemail coming up. So anyway, the Spexit vote. St. Peter's kicked off. He's trying to get back on. The big Republican National Convention is going on up in Cleveland, which is not far from where we're based near Cincinnati. I thought, well, 
Here, here's what we can do. St. Peter loves going on the road. Maybe you can go up to Cleveland, get some man on the street stuff, get into some shenanigans, mix it up a little bit with the people, the Republicans, the protesters, whatever. Get his ass up to Cleveland, however he can get up there, provided no transportation. I think his voicemail from Monday night, the uh, July 18th show, he was in the back of some sort of truck that smelled like pig shit. And it was about 150 degrees. And I think he passed out. And he was on his way to Cleveland. This voicemail, he made it to Cleveland. And as you can imagine, shit went south rather quickly in Cleveland. So uh, I told St. Pierre that he could get back on the show. He did some good shit. If he did get some, some good shit, get some good segments or whatever. In Cleveland, it did not go well. As you can imagine, nothing in St. Pierre's life really goes well. Cannot, cannot be said to be going well. Of course, that's relative, but in any case, no matter what you're comparing it to, it's not going well. So a voicemail from St. Peter from uh, earlier today. He's in a little bit of hot water. He made it to the Republican National Convention, and things went downhill from there. And uh, here's his update on it. Oh, uh, hey, Jesus. Hey, Jesus, it's Peter. Uh... I made it to uh, I made it to Cleveland. I made it to Cleveland, but I got some I got some bad news. I'm in jail right now. Uh, I got when I got here, I went downtown, like where the like this shit is, like what's going on with the Republican convention or whatever. And I get down there, and there's like a ton of people, and like somehow I got like stuck in the middle, and there was like black people on one side and like white people on the other side, and they were yelling at each other, and then like another side there was like Mexican people. They were yelling at somebody, but they were yelling at Mexicans, so I don't know what they were, like, what they were yelling about or whatever. Uh, long story short, uh, Jesus, I somehow ended up getting arrested, and uh, I'm in jail in Cleveland. Um, if, uh, like, this is the only number I could, like, remember, so this is my one phone call. Oh, I need help, Jesus. Like, you sent me up here to cover this thing or whatever, this this convention, this Republican convention. Oh, my like, God, I got all fucking discombobulated and turned around, and now, you know, I'm, I'm in jail. How the hell am I going to get out? Uh, Jesus, I'm like stuck in this. What's, what's like, what they got to say to me? Some guy just called me fresh fish. He called me fresh fish. What does that mean, Jesus? It can't be good. I mean, that can't be good, right? This is my only phone call, Jesus. You're the only fucking number I can remember. You got to do something, Jesus. I'm stuck in fucking jail. Help me, Jesus. Fresh fish. He's going to know what that means. He's seen half-baked. Well, you know, his memory's not what he used to be. But as far as helping him, uh, I mean, when he was officially part of the show and he would go to jail and he would need bailed out or whatever, we wouldn't do that. I'm not I'm not going to put up cash or whatever to get him out of jail. I don't know what makes him think I'm going to do it now. So St. Peter's in jail in Cleveland. When he'll get out, I don't know. I'm really not worried about it. He's been spexited from the show. He's he spexited. I don't care about what, what happens after the spexit. He's specs gone. So, you know, if he's listening to this, which I doubt he is, because even when he was a part of the show, he wouldn't listen to the fucking show and he wasn't in here. Sucks. To be you? Sucks to be you? That's my official response. Sucks to be you. <laughs> we uh, got the Church Stoner Jesus coming up in a little bit. Coming up next after the break, and make sure you go check out our sponsor banners on sternjesus.net. We have the free Milo hashtag, conservative flamethrower and professional troll Milo Yiannopoulos banned permanently from Twitter after getting into it with Leslie Jones, the black chick from Ghostbusters. Uh, of course, as with everything on the Internet, two sides to, uh, to the argument, both very fiery. You hear what I think about it coming up. After this, Stern Jesus Show podcast, July 20th, 2016. We're doing a live on CannabisRadio.com. If you're listening live, you're about 45 minutes away from the Tommy Chong podcast. Wednesday nights, 9 p.m. Eastern, 6 p.m. Pacific, right here on CannabisRadio.com. Stay tuned. Hoes. Show on CannabisRadio.com. The Stoner Jesus Show is brought to you by Celebrity Dildo. Make sure you check out that Celebrity Dildo banner on stonerjesus.net or just go to celebritydildo.com. Celebrity Dildo has released a new and exciting range of premium silicone dildos and have finally combined the two worlds of novelty and function. 
Celebrity dildos are made of premium medical grade silicone. They're firm yet flexible and velvet to the touch. Durable, non-porous, odorless, hypoallergenic, and let's face it, they are just a great conversation piece. If you want to check out Celebrity Dildo, go check out their banner on stonerjesus.net. And follow them on all their social media networks. Celebrity Dildo, awesome sponsor of the Stoner Jesus Show. Make sure you check them out on stonerjesus.net. Hello, my children. Stoner Jesus here to tell you about another awesome sponsor of the show, Kind Soil. Check out the Kind Soil banner on stonerjesus.net or go to kindsoil.com. And also follow at Kind Soil on Twitter. Kind Soil is a 100% organic soil program that feeds your plants from seed to harvest. All you ever do is water your plants. Never use nutrients again. Make sure you check out that Kind Soil banner on stonerjesus.net. Kind Soil allows your plant to feed as it chooses, drink fresh, clean water as it chooses, all while never experiencing burns or growth issues from chemical feeding. Kind Soil produces large, dense flowers soaked in trichomes. Go check it out for yourself, kindsoil.com, or click that Kind Soil banner on stonerjesus.net. From dabs to chibas, sativas to indicas, we roll out a whole concentrate of fresh new content every week. It's like going from the greenhouse to the dispensary. CannabisRadio.com While the feds and state are doing their dance, you still need to transact business and manage your cash. Go professional and let your customers pay with PayQuick. They pay you and they earn rewards points. PayQuick connects to your bank account for free and secures all of your transactions. And with PayQuick, you can pay your producers and processors for free. Plus, it pays to have it because it makes depositing your cash safe and so easy. No cops, no crooks, just compliance and comfort, knowing you have your cannabis business in check with PayQuick. PayQuick, the safe and easy way to pay. P-A-Y-Q-W-I-C-K dot com. I'm Radical Russ from the Russ Belleville Show. Keith Strop, the founder of Normal, is here. The single most important victory will be California. We've got Steve D'Angelo. Well, the state of cannabis affairs in California is in flux. The guru of ganja, Ed Rosenthal. It's uh, better for people to be using concentrates. Weekdays live at 6 Eastern, 3 Pacific, exclusively on CannabisRadio.com. The cannabis business industry is growing, business is booming, and as new opportunities arise in newly legalized states, each market is getting more competitive. Today, it takes more than just being a good grower. Do you have the resources to market and handle this ever-changing business landscape? Let Canna Management Corporation help you grow your cannabis business with our vast resources and experience to make your business a fully functional service company. Financial management, HR, sales, marketing, efficiency, and more. CMC has the experience and the expertise to improve your business and help you better meet the demands of your clients and customers. Call Canna Management Corporation and let our team get you ready to grow. 415-269-8015. That's 415-269-8015. Or visit canna-management.com. Tommy Chong is ready to cut through the smoke and change the tone of Tilk Radio. You're going to be a... Great granddad. Pretty cool. Morgan is Ray Dawn's son. Uh, Morgan and his wife, Tracy, they've been trying to have a baby for quite some time. (laughs) Did you hear what I said to Morgan? What? Do you know who the father is? (laughs) The Tommy Chung Podcast, only on CannabisRadio.com. Welcome to my world, world, world. The following CannabisRadio.com program contains explicit language and content that can be considered graphic and offensive. This program is not suitable for all audiences, and the opinions expressed do not reflect those of CannabisRadio.com, its staff, management, or sponsors. Listener discretion is advised. Stoner Jesus Show Podcast. 
July 20th, 2016. Doing it live on CannabisRadio.com. Welcome to everyone listening live and on podcast. Joe uh, Destruction chilling in the chat room. Go follow him on Twitter, at Joe Destruction. Very easy to remember. It's his real name, too. Would Jesus lie to you? Better yet, would Stoner Jesus lie to you? Yeah, it's a rhetorical question, I guess. <laughs> As I said, welcome back, everybody. It is time now to talk about this free Milo thing. Milo Yiannopoulos, he's a senior tech editor for Breitbart, which was a long, a long ago spinoff or descendant of the Drudge Report, conservative news site. Uh, he's a conservative, uh, a gay conservative, professional troll, just a fucking bomb thrower, a flamethrower, just says outrageous shit constantly. He's been all over the news, he's been on Joe Rogan's podcast, just on and on and on. Last night he was permanently banned from Twitter. His account, his 350,000 followers, whatever the hell it is, was at Nero. It's all gone. You go to it, says the account's been suspended, so on and so forth. A couple things about this. Because uh, I was using the hashtag Free Milo a lot earlier today. First of all, the number one mistake people make when they're they're talking about this issue is when people like me say it's an issue of free speech, we're not talking about the First Amendment of the Constitution, the United States Constitution. The First Amendment of the United States Constitution protects speech against um, the government. The government can't ban speech, can't selectively, you know, censor speech, history or debate equally, so on and so forth. We're not talking about the Constitution. We're talking about Twitter, a publicly owned company, publicly traded company, um, who claim to be this bastion of free speech. You know, they were talking about you know, when the uprisings in Egypt and so forth, and it was Twitter that was leading the way and free speech and we love everybody's opinions and we don't selectively censor people in certain groups, uh, you know, the way Facebook does or whatever and Instagram. Uh, but they do, which makes them hypocrites. And someone like me who uses the Twitter platform and adds value to the Twitter platform, I'm allowed to criticize them for being hypocrites. Here's what I wrote on my Facebook earlier today, and I screenshot it and put it on Twitter as well. Because I see a lot of people talking about, you know, well, you know, there's free speech, but free speech has consequences or repercussions. No, it doesn't. That's the point. That's what makes it free speech. It's free from consequences. It's free from repercussions. What it does have is other people being just as free as you are to say what you want to say. They're just as free to disagree with you, refute you, even ridicule mercilessly what you say. The platform, in this case Twitter, that censors speech while claiming to value free speech is hypocritical and worthy of ridicule for its hypocrisy. And that is what I'll continue to ridicule. And that is why, for many reasons, you know, Milo, he says a lot of fucking crazy shit. I don't agree with all of it, obviously. And he gets in this, so he gets in this battle with Leslie Jones uh, from um, Saturday Night Live and uh, the new Ghostbusters movie. Which, by the way, I have not seen, but I've seen the trailers, and they look fucking horrible. So anyway, it's apparently it's bombed. I mean, it opened to fucking empty theaters everywhere, uh, from what I've read. It's not doing well. Just uh, go watch the trailers. Go watch the new Ghostbuster trailers. They are horrific. And that's supposed to be the best in the movie. That's what you should make the trailer out of. The best shit in the movie. It's horrible. Leslie Jones is fucking horrible. They're all horrible. And that's from two minutes. That's the best shit. They said, to you got two and a half minutes. Get to me the best shit. If that's the best shit, that movie fucking sucks. That's not the point. Twitter accuses Milo of egging his followers on into an attack and harassment of Leslie Jones over Twitter. Now, if that were true, that'd be a different story. You cannot infringe on someone else's rights. If he egged his uh, people on, his followers on, to attack her, and they did some vicious shit, she'd, she'd take him to court. But again, Twitter bans him, even though there's fucking ISIS pages all over Twitter. Uh, Leslie Jones says, some, says some, some crazy shit on Twitter, including a fucking tweet, which I'll read here in a minute, inciting her followers to get after somebody else. The same thing Twitter accuses Milo of, this broad actually did. 
But there's a double standard. Some people can do things, other people can't do things. I really have no love for conservatives overall, but when it comes to places like Facebook and Twitter, that's really who seems to be targeted. Leftists can say whatever the fuck they want whenever the fuck they want. And they say, well, there's a long history of Milo. You know, he does this, he does that. I've yet to see a screenshot of a tweet, and I've looked, and so have other people. And you look at all the, the New York Times story and the Huffington Post story and all the stories that talk about this. None of them have a screenshot of a tweet where Milo Yiannopoulos either targeted Leslie Jones for harassment or incited his followers to do so. Of course, you can't go see the tweets of their interaction now. I haven't seen any screenshots of the tweets of their interaction, which means they can't be that bad. Or Huffington Post and New York Times splashing those fucking tweets everywhere. So whatever was said between them and their interaction on Twitter can't be that bad. If he had targeted her for harassment or incited his followers, that tweet, the screenshot of that tweet would be everywhere, but it's not. You see, I have a problem with free speech bringing a bridge. And when I say free speech, I'm not, again, I'm not talking about the First Amendment. I'm talking about a platform that prides itself on being a haven and value of, a valuer of free speech, selectively censoring and targeting other people. Because you see, what I do is based entirely on speech. Whether I'm writing or doing this show or whatever, I say crazy shit on Twitter. I've got death threats before on Twitter. I get told all the time I'm going to hell. I had a 15-year-old girl tell me to choke on a dick. And she misspelled choke. But speech is my business. When I see people saying, oh, well, you know, he got what he had coming. Why aren't you going to get what you have coming? Why won't I get what I have coming? Using that logic, a lot of people on Twitter can be uh, gotten rid of. And that's a value to me. My 145,000 followers on Twitter, that's a value to my show. That's not something I can, uh, I can uh, piss, uh, piss off, uh, piss around with. Is that a saying? It's not, some, it's not something I can mess around with. I'm not saying I could piss around with. I don't know. I don't think that's right. I think it's mess around with. God, I'm fucking sidetracked. <laughs> <laughs> so Milo Yiannopoulos gets permanently banned from Twitter. There's a great story from Reason on this. Because, look, and I'll say this. Leslie Jones got fucking bombarded by a bunch of racists. That's what happened. She got into it with Milo, and a bunch of racists started sending her pictures of gorillas, like the gorilla that got shot, and said, we know you're just trying to protect that kid, so on and so forth. And that's all despicable shit. Even, like, she tweeted out even during it, like, the people who spew that kind of hate hate themselves. They hate their lives, and that's why they do it. And, of course, that's why they do it. They're hateful, small little people who found some goofy fucking uh, racist memes, and they sent them to this woman. I don't have anything against Leslie Jones. I don't think she's funny. I think she's loud and obnoxious, and that's what her comedy is based on. But nobody deserves to they have just racist you know, shit and death threats and everything just fucking hurled at them. But one, I'm saying that, like I said, I came, I've yet to see a screenshot of where Milo incited this or uh, and, and participated in it himself. And... Two, you can fight for someone's free speech without saying what these people did was right. What these people did wasn't right. And she had a right to bitch about it. Just like I have a right to bitch about what I think Twitter's doing and what they're up to. Again, as a user who adds value to the platform, I will express my opinion of what they've done. Obviously, the final decision is theirs because it's their company. And the final decision for me, whether to leave or go, is mine. I'm not going to leave Twitter. Like I said, I have 145,000 followers. That's value to my show. I'm not going to piss away. There we go. I used it correctly that time. I'm not going to piss away that value to my show <laughs> just because uh, I feel Twitter has uh, fucked up. I'll use their platform to ridicule them myself. Anyway, Reason has a good, uh, Reason.com has a great uh, thing on this, a great article. But what I want to read, let me clear that off. Uh, this is from Breitbart, who is obviously on Milo's side. It's, you know, his thing. It's a lot of Leslie Jones' uh, racist history, like a lot of shit. She talks about white people and how white people are like this, and she shakes her head at white people and so on and so forth, which I know black people can't be racist against white people because, you know, we're white or whatever, which is another problem, but uh, not where we're going to get to right now. 
But the one thing that's interesting is a tweet she sent. Uh, she put like one with like a hippo or something and said white folks or something like that. I don't know. Something that if you did it with it to a black person, it would be considered racist. Let me find. Where's the fucking one, man? I just passed it. God damn it. <laughs> no, maybe I didn't pass it. Son of a bitch, man. Here we go. Uh, July 18th. Some bitch named White Becky 1776. I don't know what White Becky said. But Leslie Jones said, Bitch, I want to tell you about yourself, but I'm going to let everybody else do it. I'm going to retweet your hate. Get her two exclamation points. Engaging in targeted harassment and inciting her followers to harass this White Becky 1776 bitch who's probably a fucking racist piece of shit cunt who's probably a dude. But still, that's what Twitter accused Milo of. I've yet to see any tweets where he did that, but I see a tweet where she did that. And then she says something about Twitter, and then the CEO of Twitter said, please DM me. And the next thing you know, Milo's suspended. Again, Milo says a lot of crazy shit. That's his fucking thing. He's a troll. That's what trolls do. We start selectively picking people that they're going to get uh, try to silence. Well, that could be you next. If you say anything on the Internet, why can't that be you? Why, you know, what's that, the saying, uh, the, the, um, the justifications you use to take someone's rights today can be used to take yours tomorrow? And again, we're not talking about the First Amendment. Twitter's free to do what they want to do. But I'm also free to say that it's bullshit and it's hypocritical for a platform that claims to value free speech. They suspended Milo a ton of times. They don't like Milo. A lot of people don't like Milo. But that's not the point. A lot of people don't like me. Does that mean if I say something about the wrong person, uh, I'm gone? I tweeted to her today, uh, to Leslie Jones. I said, uh, who, do, who, do I, who can I report Leslie Jones to for killing not only the Saturday Night Live franchise, but also the Ghostbusters franchise? Will I get suspended? Will I get permanently banned from Twitter? Probably not, because I'm not as famous as Milo. I don't make as much noise as Milo. I don't have as many media outlets when you talk to me as Milo, or any media outlets for that matter. <laughs> no, enough about my piss poor life. I'm using the word piss a ton tonight. It's the piss show. Uh, John Chambers chilling in the speaker chat room as well with Joe Destruction. So that's my thoughts on the, the free Milo hashtag and all that. Look, you know, free speech doesn't have quote-unquote consequences. It has other people with the same amount of free speech to say what they want about your free speech. But if you value free speech, there is no censorship unless you're infringing on the rights of someone else. And like I said, I haven't seen the screenshot of a tweet where Milo did that. I, like I said, I saw where she did it. But she's still on Twitter. She still got her account, at least. I think she left Twitter for obvious reasons. Because people are fucking horrible. They're horrible, horrible little trolls. And she's forever going to get pictures of gorillas and shit sent to her fucking Twitter account. I delete my shit. Fuck that. Who needs that shit? Life's short. Who needs dumb little fucking racists sending you stupid pictures all the time? And telling you you should die. Nobody needs that. But to ban Milo for it. Matter of fact, I bet most of those people that send her those pictures, I bet they still got their Twitter accounts. It's the selective, random, bullshit censorship, all the while claiming that that kind of censorship is not going on. It is. It clearly is. So, it is what it is. Piss. Stern Jesus is your podcast. We got the Church of Stern Jesus coming up. The phone lines are open one three four seven four one four Weed. Also on Skype at Stern Jesus One. You can call in your confessions, be absolved of your sins live on the air. On what other show can you do that? That's also a rhetorical question. The answer, motherfucker, is none. Stern Jesus Show Podcast, July twentieth, two thousand sixteen. Church of Stern Jesus with my sermon, the traditional plane of uh, Psalm four twenty, and your confessions coming up. The Stoner Jesus Show on CannabisRadio.com. The 
Stoner Jesus Show is brought to you in part by Hemptations.com and PlanetEverywhere.com. they got a lot of awesome stuff for you to check out. But don't just take my word for it. Let Beach, the owner of Hemptations, tell you all about it. It's a very large selection of hemp goods, everything from reusable coffee filters to Frisbees, bandanas, everything planted everywhere on the site is made in Cincinnati, Ohio, made locally. We also have other retail products from our cosmetics, uh, earthly body product, bags on the retail site. You know, again, uh, anybody local in Cincinnati can go to hemptations.com and get the info on the stores. Planted everywhere is our .com is our retail site. You can hit me up on Hemptation Beach or like my Facebook page, Hemptations or Hemptations 2. I'm on Twitter, Google, <laughs> I'm on the internet everywhere, just like everyone. Um, you know, we love to hear from people all over the world, positive things about industrial hemp. That's what I do. That's what we do. Largest selection of industrial hemp on the planet in the stores. And I'd like to grow that inventory to be able to say that I haven't actually checked out all the other hemp retail spots to see if we have the largest amount on our planet everywhere but uh, it's a it's a fair it's a fair selection and as beach always says having temptations hello my children stoner jesus here again to tell you about an awesome sponsor of the show of course i'm talking about pottles check out the pottles banner on stonerjesus.net they have all kinds of products pinner tubes blunt tubes they have glass they have odor free stash containers and all kinds of different sizes and colors and designs they have uh, tablers, just so many products. I can't fit them onto a commercial. Just go click that Pottles banner on stonerjesus.net. Make sure you use promo code STONERJESUS. It's all capital letters, all one word. STONERJESUS at checkout at Pottles for 20% off. Go check out all of the amazing products Pottles has to offer. Check out that Pottles banner on stonerjesus.net and make sure you use that promo code STONERJESUS to get 20% off. At Pottles. CannabisRadio.com keeps you in the know Monday through Friday on air and on demand with Cannabis Radio News. Presented with the definitive worldwide news source, the Associated Press. Stay informed with exclusive news on all things cannabis. Cannabis Radio News, live weeknights at 6 p.m. Eastern, 3 p.m. Pacific, during the Russ Belville Show. Or download the daily podcast exclusively on CannabisRadio.com, as well as iTunes, Stitcher, and iHeartRadio. When breaking news happens in the cannabis industry, Cannabis Radio News delivers the details first. The next generation of vaporizers has arrived. Vuber vaporizers are blazing the way with unparalleled technology for oil, concentrate, or dry flower pens. Providing unsurpassed customer service and expert craftsmanship, Vuber vaporizers use cutting-edge technology, providing a power-packed, smoother vapor with a lifetime guarantee. Experience vaporizing the way it was meant to be, the Vuber way. Educator, author, and advocate, Dr. Mitch Earlywine is here to tackle the burning issues. Author Catherine Hiller and her great new book, Just Say Yes, Marijuana Memoir. So I love the way you use time in the memoir. I started at the present time, and I described a visit to my dealer. And then I would go backward in time so that every chapter starts a little bit earlier. I do not feel that marijuana has in any way harmed my life. It certainly hasn't led me to the streets. It's led me to a more joyful life experience. Burning Issues, only on CannabisRadio.com. Oh, let the marijuana llama tell you something now. Bought a game for your phone, gonna make you say, wow. The game's about the game of growing cannabis for cash. Grow the seed, sell the board, put the savings in the stash. Little by little, your empire grows large. Put the fake celebrities inside your entourage. You can choose to play with Snoop or me or Cheech and Chong. Cypress Hill, Willie Nelson, Wiz Khalifa with a bong. The name of the game is him pink, that's the point. Download and play while you light yourself a joint. Business of cannabis should be no crime. Hemp pink is even hot proved by the man who run high times. Oh yeah, get it on Android and I and iOS today. Marijuana llama out. Got to tend to me on crops, you know. Money don't make itself. Hemp pink. Previously on the Stoner Jesus Show. Hello. Hey, uh, are you the one that put the ad on Craigslist? 
Uh, he was in the, the personal no. section uh, about you know want to have a little uh, have a little good time tonight. No. Nothing about you know any uh, backdoor action. No. A little fifth base. You're not into that. No, and I I suggest you don't fucking call my phone number, you fucking perverted bastard. Are you, are you sure you're not the one on the Craigslist? You're talking dirty to me. Damn, she hung up. That was good. It was funny though. The Stoner Jesus Show, live Mondays, Wednesdays, and Fridays at 8 p.m. Eastern, 5 p.m. Pacific. Or find the Stoner Jesus Show podcast on demand at CannabisRadio.com and StonerJesus.net. Peace, bitches. The following CannabisRadio.com program contains explicit language and content that can be considered graphic and offensive. This program is not suitable for all audiences, and the opinions expressed do not reflect those of CannabisRadio.com, its staff, management, or sponsors. Listener discretion is advised. This is the church that Stoner Jesus has made. Let us rejoice and be glad. Recite your act of contrition and prepare to confess your sins to our Savior of the Weed at 1-347-414-WEED. Receive your reefer repentance now from the Church of Stoner Jesus. Indeed. Do all that stuff you just said, because it's all very important. <laughs> it is time for the Church of Standard Jesus. Of course, your confessions. You want to call them in, one three four seven four one four weed Skype Standard Jesus 1. It's one three four seven four one four nine three three three. 414 Also have the traditional reading by Standard Schizo of Psalm 420. Coming up, but first my sermon. My sermon's a bit of a continuation from the last segment about the free Milo thing. <clears throat> it's about the rise, really, of political correctness, but most of all, it's, I guess, with the rise of the internet and instant communication and the ability with social media to just say whatever they want from the safety of their own home without any, me worried about, you know, like you would in real life, you call somebody a motherfucker, you might get punched in the face. On the internet, nothing's really going to happen to you. And that could have caused one or two things. That could have caused people to be uh, tougher, you know, be able to take things more in stride because you know, there's so much hate flying around that people were just going to, you know, just to be more desensitized to it and be able to handle more. But the opposite has happened. The, uh, the rise of the Internet has coincided with the rise of political correctness, which started about 20, 25 years ago. And people become increasingly more sensitive and they become again another you know incongruous a part of you know the internet and having this sense of communication they become more vocal about how sensitive they are the uh, phone call coming in confession hopefully stone or jesus show what's up you're live in the air uh, hello hello stone or moses is that you uh, close enough. That's me. Is this St. Paul? Oh, uh, I, it's, uh, what's my name? Yeah, St. Paul. Hey. <laughs> hey, I'm out here in the barn. I can hear that. Uh, oh, shut the fuck up. God damn it. Uh, my <laughs> confession is that I, uh, uh, drank a bunch of bleach and, uh, I smoked some weed. I think it was dipped. I think I bought it from that guy, that guy that dipped the brains and, Weed or whatever from Adelaide. Oh, yeah. Is it selling now? <laughs> yeah. The brain weed. I think I had some of that. Is that an owl? Uh, it's like a chicken or something. I don't know. <laughs> uh, I only really see him from behind, you know, so. <laughs> I forget. Oh. Uh, so what's your confession, St. Paul? I uh, fuck you, St. Peter, and uh, well, yeah. my confession is that I've been uh, raping all these animals. So I don't know what my uh, sin is for that, but uh, I don't know what my punishment or whatever it is. What is it? We should probably stop, you know, raping animals. Well, uh, 
what if they like it? Well, I mean, I guess you have to prove that in the court of law. What? I swear that's a fucking owl. Is there an owl in the barn? Mom, is that you? It's a Stoner Moses. Oh, Stoner Moses. So, yeah, I called in to say, uh, I called in for the introduction. Welcome to the Stoner Moses show. Uh, on, uh, on cannabis stuff. Because I'm trying to replace, uh, St. Saint, Saint Peter. Yes, did you hear about St. Peter being in jail? Yeah, I'm glad. I hope he gets raped. It's a good possibility. <laughs> uh, what? Oh, St. Peter sorry. getting I raped. Just, I was just taking a hit off of this uh, free on. I ripped off an air conditioner. <laughs> Makes me hallucinate a little bit. I imagine it would. Oh, I love you, Mommy. <laughs> Always illuminating. Call from St. Paul and his confession. See, that's what I'm talking about. A lot of people would be offended by that. I think more so than would have been a few decades ago. I don't know. Maybe I'm wrong about that. But it just seems like people are more sensitive nowadays. Or, Like I said, maybe there's more vocal about how sensitive they are. They're always offended about things. You know, the, the thought of St. Paul raping defenseless barn animals, which I, I'm fucking, I, I think one of them was an owl. I know I heard a horse and a cow, some other shit, but that one was definitely an owl. They'd be horrified by the prospect of all those animals getting repeatedly raped. But, you know, just another call on the Stern Jesus show. So that's my sermon at St. Paul's Confession. If you got a confession, there's still time to call in one three four seven four one four. Weed now. Bow your motherfucking heads in prayer. The traditional reading by Stoner Schizo of Psalm four twenty here on the Church of Stoner Jesus on the Stoner Jesus Show. Yo. You're listening to the Stoner Jesus Show on stonerjesus.net. I'm Stoner Schizo, and I'm here to read you Psalms 420, written by me, Stoner Schizo. Stoner Jesus is my shepherd, I shall not want for weed. He maketh me toke up in pastures of green. He leadeth me beside the bubbling bong water. He restoreth my bag. He leadeth me in the paths of legalization for his name's sake. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of herb, I will fear no evil, for thou smokest with me. Thy bowl and thy balm, they comfort me. Thou preparest munchies before me in the presence of the popo. Thou anointest my head with cannabis oil, my bowl runneth over. Surely highness and munchies shall follow me all the days of my life. And I will toke on that smoke in the studio of Stoner Jesus forever. Amen. Amen. Wonderful. Wonderful. John the Charm says, I confess, when I was a kid, I stole an ounce of weed from Mom, and she thought her dealer shorted her and had his car window bashed in. That's pretty good. I can't remember if I ever stole weed before. I think I have. It's not cool, but I did a lot of stupid shit when I was a kid. <laughs> this poor guy had his window bashed in. Some poor drug dealer. Not hurting anybody. Just selling weed. Slanging dope, as the kids say. That was Church of Standard Jesus. Thanks, everybody, <laughs> for participating. <laughs> we will... Uh, man, the fucking... World Star Hip Hop's gotten depressing lately. There's really, I mean, there's Donald Trump's wife thing with Michelle Obama. Uh, I don't know. I think all that. Speaking of fucking trolls, 
I think Donald Trump's whole presidential run is a, just one big fucking troll. I think it's like a big fucking episode of Candy Camera or something. I don't know. <laughs> what, uh, maybe this uh, this restaurant tried to serve a cop shards of glass in his sandwich. <laughs> I'll check that out too. <laughs> it's fucked. There's fucked up shit going on everywhere, man. Everywhere. There's fucked up shit. What is this? Plies? There's a rapper apparently named Plies. He doesn't like when Pokemon come to his bedroom. Maybe we'll check that out too. We're running out of time. If you're listening live, Tommy Chong Podcast is coming up. Stern and Jesus Show Podcast, where you're listening to right now, July 20th, 2016. We'll be back, Dick Nuggets. The Stoner Jesus Show on CannabisRadio.com. The Stoner Jesus Show is brought to you by Head Shop Headquarters. Check out the Head Shop Headquarters banner on stonerjesus.net. They have all kinds of glass, all the glass you'll ever need, whether it's pipes or bubblers or dab rigs or larger water pipes, accessories, whatever you need, you can get it at Head Shop Headquarters. Check out their banner on stonerjesus.net. They have great products, great glass, and great deals, and free shipping on all orders in the United States. Go check them out, headshopheadquarters.com, or simply click that Head Shop Headquarters banner on stonerjesus.net. Another awesome sponsor of the show, Head Shop Headquarters. Cannabis use isn't the only thing growing. So are we. Grow with us, cannabisradio.com. Great websites today need expert web design and development and need to be e-commerce ready and mobile friendly. But building a marketable and profitable website can be an uphill climb. Ready to make your new website or replace your existing website? Think Orange as the new way to get in the black. Orange Hill Development works with Fortune 500 companies and offer the same top quality development service at a fraction of what other providers charge. Brands like Absolute, Carlsberg, and Nestle trust Orange Hill Development. Find out why you should trust your website website with Orange Hill. Contact Orange Hill for a consultation today at orangehilldevelopment.com. Play as Ted Growing, expelled botany sophomore and the biggest grower in town, only on Weed Firm Replanted. Available on the App Store and Google Play. It's a lot of work being the biggest grower in town. Maintaining a room full of plants while dealing with a slew of eccentric customers, from a hardcore partier to the curious neighbor next door. Is anybody home? Help me expand my bud business by unlocking new strains, customizing my grow room, and completing challenges that you can't get enough of. Grow your empire so big you can see it from space. Low on funds? Don't worry. Weed Firm Replanted is free to download. Download Weed Firm Replanted for free on the App Store and Google Play today. Get growing, Mr. Growing. Today I started smoking my weed again. I'm right back where I really always been. I got over my weed just long enough Let my probation end And today I started smoking my weed again Hey boy, pass me that joint Chong's choice. <laughs> the Tommy Chung Podcast, only on CannabisRadio.com. Hi, I'm Montel Williams. Most of you know me as a talk show host, but I'm also an author, actor, single father of four, avid snowboarder, and I'm also a medical marijuana patient. Living with multiple sclerosis, I'm in pain every day. Medical marijuana is my last resort, and it helps me when all other drugs have failed. If you'd like more information about medical marijuana, you can contact the Marijuana Policy Project at mpp.org or call 1-877-JOIN-MPP. The following CannabisRadio.com program contains explicit language and content that can be considered graphic and offensive. This program is not suitable for all audiences, and the opinions expressed do not reflect those of CannabisRadio.com, its staff, management, or sponsors. Listener discretion is advised.
Stone or Jesus Show podcast, July 20th, 2016. We are running out of time. If you're listening live on CannabisRadio.com, the Tommy Chong podcast is coming up, as it does every Wednesday night, 9 p.m. Eastern, 6 p.m. Pacific. Of course, on demand at CannabisRadio.com. You can find the Tommy Chong podcast. You can find my show, the Stone or Jesus podcast, the Stone or Jesus Show. You can find Russ Belleville and Dr. Matrilli Wine and uh, Dr. Dina and Kyle Cushman and just so many. Great host, Vivian McPeak, founder of HempFest. Go check them out on CannabisRadio.com, the premier cannabis podcast network in the entire world. This is from WorldStarHipHop.com. A higher restaurant gets shut down after a cop was served shards of glass in his sandwich. Do you think it was intentional? I apologize. I can't. This matter is under investigation. And that's the big question. Did a restaurant intentionally put shards of glass in a Columbus police officer's sandwich? Or is it just a horrible accident? This is a story we <laughs> broke last night on ABC6 News at 11. And six on your sides, Tom Susie is live in the King Lincoln District tonight with the latest on this one. Tom? Yolanda, thank you. It happened yesterday afternoon right here at the Lincoln Cafe. That officer dropped by for a quick sandwich. He took one bite and realized he was chewing on glass. It's all spelled out in this Columbus Police Department document obtained by Six on Your Side investigators. It says Officer Q. Wynn bit into his Reuben sandwich and heard crushing. He then realized his mouth was bleeding. Inside his sandwich, shards of glass. According to our sources, Officer Wynn's partner immediately drove him here to Grant Medical Center. Several tests were performed. He was treated, released, and appears to be okay. Leon Lewis is operations manager for Lincoln Cafe, where the officer purchased the sandwich. Do you think it was intentional? Could you spell your name? I mean, you must have a gut feeling. Ah, uh, man. Um, Do you think I, it was intentional? I apologize. I can't. This matter is under investigation. This restaurant says it's cooperating with both the Columbus Police Department and Health Department. Just hours ago, health inspectors dropped by the restaurant. They talked with the person who served the officer a sandwich. They inspected the food. Inspectors didn't find anything wrong with the food. What they did find were glass plates with chips on the rim in four small pieces of broken glass under the drying rack. A <laughs> spokesperson with the health department says finding glass in food is extremely rare. Business is fine. But it happened, though. This finding glass in food is extremely rare. Yes. Sounds like this place has fucking glass everywhere. Glass was found in the sandwich, so how did the glass get well, into the sandwich? This is fine. I'm sorry. Uh, I'm sorry, sir. We have glass. This is everywhere. I mean, you look at my restaurant. You can't fucking walk two feet without stepping on some broken glass. It's uh, under things. It's on top of things. There's fucking the plates are chipping off. There's just glass everywhere. Once again, it's under investigation. No. Investigating one of your, your restaurants full of glass. Broken glass. It's under... It's under investigation. Let me go see if we've got like a minute left. Let's go see if this fucking Plies thing is any, any good. He doesn't like Pokemon in his bedroom. You better be good, Plies. Unlike your name. Hey, Pokemon. I'm going to say this shit one time and one motherfucking time only, Mr. Motherfucking Pokemon. But the next time somebody show me that you're in the motherfucking bed with me, Pokemon, I'm going to beat your motherfucking ass. Because I don't motherfucking know you like that, Pokemon. And I don't go that motherfucking way. Motherfucker come telling me last night, Babe, babe, look, don't move. But babe, babe, look. Babe, look, Pokemon in the bed with us. <laughs> what the fuck Pokemon doing in my motherfucking bed? <laughs> Pokemon, I ain't motherfucking invite you in here. <laughs> so I'm going to tell you one motherfucking time and one time only, Pokemon. Stay out my motherfucking bed because I don't motherfucking know you like that. Fuck you all on me for like you motherfucking know me. I don't motherfucking know you like that, Pokemon. Stay out my motherfucking bed and I'm going to beat your little motherfucking ass, Pokemon. Stay out my motherfucking bed, Pokemon. I know you like that. Beat your ass, Pokemon. Stay out my fucking bed, Pokemon. Is that a real person? Is that like a real guy? Who really talks like that? Does he rap like that too? That'd be fucking amazing. Yo, yo, Pokemon. Stern Jesus Show Podcast. Tommy Chong Podcast is coming up. We'll be back Friday night, 8 p.m. Eastern Time. Go check out the podcast on sternjesus.net. All information on the show. Sternjesus.net. Thanks everybody for listening. Go find me on Twitter, all my social media networks, all that shit. We're running out of time. We're out.